I talk a lot about courage because it is such a huge characteristic that I think we don't talk enough about, especially in sales. I feel like we overlook the courage that it takes to really build a business and step into that. Welcome to Business Leaders with Soul, a podcast showcasing the change makers and innovators of our times who are ushering in a new age of conscious business. They're authentic, they're original, and their message connects with the people they're here to serve. Be inspired by these futurists and make the difference that you, too, came here to make. And now, here's your host, Lee Aldridge. Hi, everybody. I'm Lee Aldridge with Soul Story Creative, where we don't tell you who to be. We show the world who you are. And our guest today is Dr. Nadia Brown, founder and CEO of the Doyen Agency. Now, Dr. Nadia Brown is a sales strategist, consultant, and trainer who works with business owners, companies, and corporations to multiply revenue and awaken the consistent closer within your sales team using her consistent sales method. Nadia brings over 15 years of experience in leadership, powerful conversations, achieving goals, and respect for people to develop a comprehensive sales process to increase your closing rates and satisfy client retention. Nadia's clients have seen massive results, like raising their rates, decreasing their refund request, and doubling or tripling their annual revenue. And Nadia, I am just so happy to have you here because I know the excellent sales training I received from you a few years ago I'm still using it today. It's the only sales conversation guide I use. Thank you. It's just crazy. (laughs) So good to be here. (laughs) Thank you. I am so happy. Just welcome. And I've watched you over the last decade and just especially the last six years. And there is just a great soul story there. I know Mm -hmm. there is. How did you get where you are? What what would you say is the number one characteristic that served you from beginning up to where you are now for your business success? Oh, my gosh. It's hard to bring it down to one, but I would say, well, I'm going to say two things. I know you only asked for one, but I think they go hand in hand or like twins. Um, yeah. One is being courageous to explore and experiment in my business. And the other one is perseverance, because as you know, things don't always work out the way we hoped. And we can't always throw in a towel if we try one time and it it fails. And honestly, the Doyen agency was birthed out of failure. And so just having that experimental, exploratory, whatever that word is, (laughs) attitude, but also being willing to persevere through the hard times um, is what has led me to today. And we have had a dose of that, haven't we? I mean, I think our perseverance has been taken to a whole new level. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh, I know you've been through, you know, personal stuff. I've been through personal Mm -hmm. stuff while we're growing our businesses. And you bring up two good points. I mean, the courage, the courage. Can you speak to that? Like, Courage to be open-minded. What is that? To explore? To what? What am I looking for? Oh, I talk a lot about courage, even in my sales trainings, because it takes a lot of courage to put yourself out there. Um, mm-hmm. And then when you talk about just your overall business, um, it takes a lot of courage to make decisions. Um, sometimes we are those trailblazers, those pioneers. Like we have a vision that others don't yet see. Um, and it's difficult because it's hard to find mentors or coaches or support when they don't see the vision that you see. Um, and it takes courage to stand by that. It takes courage to keep going in the face of adversity. And like you mentioned, we've all have different types of adversities in our business, our personal lives, which affects our businesses. 
um, it takes courage to say, you know what, I'm going to get up again tomorrow and try again. And, you know, and also as it relates to sales, it takes courage to ask for the sale. You know, it takes courage to invite people to work with you. And in that same way, it takes courage when people say no or not now, and you still have to keep going to that next conversation. And so that's why I talk a lot about courage because it is such a huge characteristic that I think we don't talk enough about. Um, and especially in sales, I feel like we overlook the courage that it takes to really build a business, um, and step into that. That's right. And we talk, you know, about, uh, mindset. Mm -hmm. I hear mindset a lot. But gosh, if we spent as much time talking about the courage Mm -hmm. that it takes for all of those things to put myself out there, I hid behind a camera in my first career for 30 years. Yes, yes. For me to come out from behind the camera (laughs) because I needed to, that, that career ended. My body just stopped working really good. And... I had to learn to be in front of the camera. And just me here doing this podcast has taken an incredible amount of courage. And then making decisions. How Mm -hmm. has the last couple of years impacted us in having to make courageous decisions? We didn't even know. We still don't know. How do you do that? You know... You do it one step at a time. I think one of the things that I see, especially with us as women uh, and high achieving women, we sometimes get caught up in the gold star, what I call the gold star mentality. And we want it to be perfect from the beginning. And it's difficult when you are now put into a space, whether you chose to put yourself in that space or didn't choose. And you're having to make these changes and decisions you don't have all the answers. It's not perfect. It's not, sometimes it's not even pretty, but in order for you to continue to grow your business, to put yourself out there, to remain re- relevant, to be able to be found, you have to go forward. And like you said, it takes courage to be like, I'm not a hundred percent sure how this is going to work. Um, but I know I can't sit still. I can't ball up in a corner and cry maybe for a few minutes, but I got to get back up and dry my tears. And move forward. And, you know, and that was one of the reasons why also when we talked about a theme, I talked about permission because I feel like sometimes we as women wait for others to give us permission to go after our big dreams or we wait to run it by the committee, right? How many times have you had a great idea and you called all these different people and you ran it by the committee, quote unquote committee? Right? I don't do that anymore because it, uh uh, they just mess up over it. Yeah, by the time you're done, you're like, oh, maybe that was a dumb idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or can I really do it? Like, they so don't seize it down. And so, uh, you know, just giving yourself permission to really go after your big dreams um, and do it your way and do it on your own terms is so important. But there's got to be a trust in that, right? We've got to mm-hmm. trust that my dream has legs because yes. I have it. It's that yes. simple. Yes. And I, you know, the... The fact that you have the vision means you have what it takes to complete it. You may need yes. support because a lot of times we are big visionaries. So you're going to hire a team to support you in the vision, but they are doing what you direct them to do in order to see that vision come to pass. We're not asking them for permission to go after the vision. And I think that is an important distinction as it relates to, you know, going after our big Well, business. yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Because that takes it right back to we are the visionaries. We mm-hmm. have this, this inspired goosebumps, full body goosebumps idea that yep. we know is divine, quite frankly. And, mm-hmm. and, and, but, but people don't see it. So you've got, you know, friends or colleagues especially friends and family, like don't ever tell it to family ever. Never. She, yeah. Dr. Nadia is waving her hands to never, <laughs> ever get the hook, yep. but we need to source our team members 
very consciously. Yes. You know, we yes. are in the new age of conscious business and there is a match. We're also in an age of collaboration that it, I, I have the vision, but it's that who, not how, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. how can we bring people around us that will see our vision? Yes. Yeah. When, when it's really hard and, you know, um, I think you bring up such a good point around that because it's not that our idea isn't great, brilliant, but the seeds of doubt come in. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when we end up in the corner. Mm hmm. We're already going to have our own seeds of doubt. We don't need people to plant new seeds of doubt and start watering it. Right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, okay, so I give myself permission to dream. What is that going to look like for me and my business? You know, we can talk about pivoting. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had to pivot. Mm -hmm. I think you have had to pivot. I'm not sure there's not a business leader on the planet that hasn't considered what our beloved humanity needs now. Because it's different than it was, maybe. Is yeah. it? What 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 have you seen that's different? Oh my gosh, I've seen so many different things. I think one, even for pivoting, so for me, I pivoted in my business in 2017. So prior to that, I was doing a lot more leadership training and coaching and support for women. Um, and a lot of them were in corporate. They weren't even business owners. There were some, but a lot of it was corporate focused. Um and in 2017, we decided to shift and I made the decision to pivot because we launched the Doyen Agency. Um, and earlier I mentioned the Doyen Agency was actually birthed out of failure. Um, and that failure was because I hated sales. I, I hated it. I was good and very passionate about what I did in my work with women leaders. And, but I did not like the sales process. I had so many negative thoughts around sales. And the sales training that I received up to that point was just so out of alignment that me and my rebellion said, I'm just like, I'm just not going to do it that way. I did, but I didn't have another way to do it. So it obviously impacted my business. And it caused me to just be in a place where I was out of money. I couldn't afford to pay team. Like it was a very horrible place to be. Um, I even took a part-time job to just stop the hemorrhaging so I could give myself a moment to reset. And then after some time of doing it and really learning how to do sales my way and getting mm -hmm. good at it, I decided with the help of some very trusted friends and my husband, they were like, you didn't go through this just to go through it. And you now have a gift to share. And that was where we birthed the doing an agency. But even in that, I go from coaching. I had a coaching program. I had coaching clients. I was doing events. I was planning an event that I chose to actually cancel um, to now provide sales support to women so that they would have that consistent revenue in their businesses as they pursued their passion and they were working with their clients and pursuing their dreams. Huge pivot because at the time I was surrounded by coaches. I was surrounded by people that were doing something vastly different than what I was doing and we, I had to figure it out. And so and then you fast forward to last year when COVID shows up, we're all like, what the what? And just yeah. having to, you know, make those different pivots. One of the big pivots that we made um, is that part of one of the services we provide is back of room sales event support, right? All our right. events were in person. <laughs> that all got shut down. <laughs> Close that door. Right. Slam shut and the whole world was sent to a collective timeout. Right. And so um, April of last year, I had a colleague that called and she was like, hey, I have a big client and we have this opportunity to try. Because at the time, we didn't know if this was going to work to try to take an in-person event and shift it virtually right. and see what happens. Cross our fingers and see what happens. It was a massive success. Um, she actually made more sales during the virtual version than the in-person version. Um, and that just opened the, right. And that just opened the door for us to continue to experiment with this 
and see how it went. And so in last year, we were able to support over, I would say over the past 18 months or so with virtual events, back around sales. And then we've made anywhere from 50,000 in sales to over 2.1 million. Like it has been a phenomenal experiment because it literally was an experiment. We had no idea if it would work. Well, that's that's why you're a business leader that innovates and visions and makes it happen. I mean, this is inspired action at, at the heart of it, you know, mm-hmm. and it is an experiment, but it isn't mm-hmm. all innovation an experiment? Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. that yeah. just blows my mind. I love that. So um, here you are. You're even more successful after stretching mm-hmm. and... Um, serving in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Making, making, you know, more revenue, a bigger impact and certainly affecting so many more women leaders lives yes. because now yes. they can go out and spread their message. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. that is beautiful. So there's a lot of opportunity that business leaders have today. Absolutely. And, and I think you've said it really well. I mean, there are so many innovative platforms coming on on board so that Mm -hmm. we can do online and make it interactive and make it participatory. Well, let's see. Permission to pivot is so important. I know that we have re-looked at things and it's freed up. It's actually a better business model for us, for Mm -hmm. our gifts. Mm -hmm. So I think the overarching message here is that, you know, this new age is really bringing up leveling us in a way that we couldn't have dreamed, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, you know, even before COVID, for me personally, just looking at my business and pivoting, um, because you and I have talked about it, so we'll share it with the listeners. Um, In 2019, uh, my brother uh, was arrested. And um, unfortunately, it was bigger than we ever imagined. It was one of those deals where we just could not get him out of it, right? You know, he'd been in Mm. trouble before. We were able to finagle it and, you know, but this time was big. Um, And this time he had a three-year-old at Mm. home with my mom. And my husband and I made the decision, you know, family, you can talk to the family, talk to my brother to take his daughter in, still not Mm. knowing what the outcome would be. We also had my 13-year-old. She lived with us for a year. Um, but stepping into a parental role really caused me to look at how I flowed and operated in my business. Because at one point I had two girls at home watching me. Now we had the one. Um, and then last year, um, after my brother was sentenced, my mom has her health issues. And my mom was with us, with us for almost a year after a stroke and over. Yeah, surgery. I remember you went yeah. to Florida and brought her back mm-hmm. to Arizona after mm-hmm. she had that stroke. Yep. And then talking about having to pivot because I was a caretaker. I have a, I had a then a four year old at home, um, homeschool, right? Cause COVID. And so there was just a lot that I had to shift in my business because I could not do business in the same way and continue to function. And so I think it's important that, again, we give ourselves that permission because there's that part of me that is like, am I giving up on my business? You know, what does that really look like? But I also had to shift because now I'm a mom. We're in the process of adopting my niece. Um, And I'm still a business owner. I'm still a wife. And it was like, how do I create a business that can really support my family and my life? Yep. So there were some services that we currently no longer offer. And now we have things like Convert Lab and other trainings, which I absolutely love to do anyway. Um, but it allows me that flexibility that I need in order to really be there for my family. And so I think, especially as women, right, there are just so many different things. And sometimes the, the, the brunt of some of those things fall on our shoulders. I have a very supportive husband. He has my back. Uh, but you know, it just depends and all of our situations are different. And so just giving yourself that permission that, you know what, life has just handed me sometimes a gift wrapped in, um, an obstacle or wrapped in pain. And it will give us that opportunity to really look at how do I pivot? And it may not be a massive pivot. Like we didn't overhaul the business. We actually huh. started to implement things that were on my heart to do anyway. Um, yep. 
And so we just did that. But I just wanted to share, you know, like, because there's just so many things. And so the past couple of years has definitely been a lot of, you know, a lot of this. So just kind of bobbing and weaving until we get it right. And we're going to keep doing that. And the thing is, is <laughs> everything you just shared is part of brand strategy. Mm-hmm. We have mm-hmm. to take into consideration our life first. Mm -hmm. Who Mm -hmm. are we and what do we stand for? Well, we stand for adopting our knees when it's really inconvenient and totally out, out, just not in the plan. Right. And we're going to bring mom back and get her convalesced. And then we're going to take her back and get her settled in her Florida home. Mm -hmm. This is all part of brand strategy. And that's all you did. You rebranded a little bit. You shifted, you pivoted, and you Mm -hmm. gave yourself permission that you didn't have to have it like it was in 2019. Yes, and then absolutely. look what happened in 2021. You did better than you did in 2019 and before. Right? It's crazy. <laughs> it's like, well, there we go. <laughs> I love it. I can't think of a better way to wrap up, except for I don't want to. Um, so much fun. But this truly is. I mean, you say in one of your posts, you know, you've shouldered the burden of being wise counsel, leader, sage long enough. You lift as you lead, but now it's time for you to make the same commitment to yourself. Yes. You know, we all have, like you said so beautifully, so much more hidden, untapped potential that's just waiting to be unleashed. And it is Mm -hmm. just such a joy Mm -hmm. to see you and our clients and all these other beautiful women and men that are bringing in this new age with innovation, collaboration, and authenticity. I mean, you are real to me and I'm sure to our listeners. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for sharing you. So as we wrap up, Nadia, is there anything else you'd like to add? What is the best way to connect or get into to, to the Doyen agency world? Well, one of the things that we have that we've created is our Discover Your Sales Blind Spot quiz. Um, no, no, because no matter how long you've been doing sales, whether you like it or not, we all have blind spots. And so you can grab, uh, get a chance to go take that quiz. It'll take a couple minutes at discoveryoursalesblindspot.com um, to learn more about us and what we do at the agency. Then obviously you can join our, visit our website at thedoyenagency.com. And, and we'll be sure and put those links in your show notes so people can go and take that quiz. Guess yes. where I'm going? <laughs> to take the quiz. Master, I'm going to go take that quiz. Discover your sales blindspots.com discover your sales blindspots.com okay thank you so much dr nadia this has been wonderful yes thank you lee thanks for tuning in to business leaders with soul we hope you enjoyed this discussion into the mind of one of today's authentic thought leaders We'll be back with another powerful perspective in the next podcast, so be sure to subscribe to get notifications and please share with others. You can connect with us by following Soul Story Creative on LinkedIn or by visiting soulstorycreative.com, where we don't tell you who to be, we show the world who you are. We look forward to seeing you next time.